In our previous video, we took a look at the new HD Zero goggles, some of the specifications and what makes this goggle so special. Today, we'll be doing a full setup of these goggles to prepare for its first flight. So if you're looking to get one of these new goggles, this is the video for you. So with that said, let's begin. Now we have all of our components on the table here to set this whole goggles up. Everything from our face place to the foam padding, our batteries, our strap, even some antennas here to complement these new goggles. So let's start off with the face plate. Now this is obviously gonna be a subjective thing based upon the shape of your face. And let's see here, we have two face plates here which is pretty convenient. One for a more flat and a wider face and a narrow one here with a more curved face. And I think that one, I don't have any issues with it. This one here, I can feel some little light leaks right here. I can feel it's not really sitting on the corners of my face. We have our foam plate right here, and this goes right on here to actually seal on your face. And the way to do this is by installing these double side tape here. It's actually a Velcro tape. So one side actually sticks towards the foam, and then the other end goes on this. You have like only one attempt at this, and I wanna make sure it's done the right way. Take this off. If you have any alcohol wipes, that would be the best time to use it right now to clean this on here. I really, let's see here. Do I have any? No, I don't have any, but that would be a wise thing to do. I'm gonna start from the corner here. It's tricky guys, it's tricky. Progress is being made. All right, okay. That turned out pretty good. Now time to put the foam on there and see if this really did work out pretty fine. Now this is obviously removable. You can remove the foam if you want to. All right, the foam piece is in there. Take a look at it, looks pretty good. That's a tight fit, guys. No leaks at all, even if I tried to. Pretty straightforward strap on here. Really nice, thick strap. Just gonna fit this through the metal hooks or tabs right here. It's the claps on here. Put that right there. Same for the other side. And this looks like a pretty strong strap here. Some other manufacturers go with a three point strap system here, but this thing here is pretty thick. And you also have a holder here for your battery if you wanna do that. I'm not using the battery in here, but you can obviously buy one of those. For now, let's take a look at this, put this behind my head. Not bad, it's not too tight. I see this thing fits me really well. All right, next thing, let's put our SD card in here so this thing can record. You might also wanna need an SD card to update the firmware on these goggles, and we'll do that once we get to the computer. Now, I am a big supporter of putting the latest firmware on your devices, but I do also like to check to see what features have been removed or added to the goggles before I do that. But for right now, we know that HD Zero did add 100 frame per second support for the HDMI in, just for like the walk snail system, as well as their newer cameras on the market. We have some 90 frames per second cameras on there and some other features like OSD support. So it's always good to update the firmware on your devices. All right, pretty straightforward. I got the right way the first time. And just put it in there and there you go. Now the next big step here is the antennas. Now the HD Zero system here, they really don't transmit any information, they only receive. So technically you can get away with powering these up without putting the antennas on here. But from my experience, every time a device is designed for an antenna and to operate with an antenna, I like to put them on here. Now, you can use any antennas from previous drones as long as it has an SMA connector on here. And obviously you can use two Omnis and two Omnis in here or a patch and an Omni. Um, it's very subjective. Now for best overall performance, most pilots usually go with a patch and Omni combination. And that's what we're gonna use here today. I'm using the True RC X Air antennas. These are made for the actual HD Zero VRXs. And these are a pretty good combination. You also have some with dual antennas on them. So this is just a single, this is a small, sleek, compact design, and this should be good for travel and for performance. So let's take a look at these and see how they work. Now it's interesting because these things do come with mounts for the rail system on the HD Zero system. In this case, it comes with two rails mounting solutions right here. These are actually for the VRX. These are a little bit too small for these goggles. Now True RC is making a version or a set for these goggles with, with larger rails that I have right here. Those are not on the market at the time of filming. So I did have to print my own and these are just a little bit larger than the one that came for the VRX. You can really see it right here. But eventually they will sell this kit with the proper rails and also a combination with the patch and the Omnis 
for the tops, little stubby antennas. In this case, I have to buy them separate. If you're interested in these, I'll link them down below, as well as the link to print your own mount for the HD Zero goggles. And let's try to install these. Now, as you can see, the stock one has a double side tape and the method here is just to remove these, have your wire for the antenna run through this little gap right here. And then you have a pretty sleek and compact design. And you can see how the wire is going through this little gap right here. So that makes sense. Now, the ones that I printed out myself or had printed because my printer isn't working right now, uh, they don't have the double side tape on them. So I will have to put that on there. As far as the top here, I'm going with some stubbies from Luminaires because I couldn't get the true RC available at my store. So I'm using the Micro AX2 stubby antennas. These are pretty good, 5.8 and very similar to nature as the ones from True RC. And True RC did design these anyway. So um, it's almost the same manufacturer making these antennas as well for Luminaire. That's gonna be for the right side. And this is gonna be for the left side. What do you guys think? Make sure I apply it pretty good. All right, make sure this is centered and straight. Not bad, it looks okay. I'm just being picky. Let's try this one here. Let's do it. Let's just do this, I can make it. We have two antennas on here. Those are your patch. So here's not the, really the hard part. Now you have to put these SMA antennas onto these connection. We're just gonna remove these covers for the port. And these wires here, they're pretty robust, but they're also really stiff. So you gotta find a way to mount this on here and not damage the antenna. So I'm just gonna try my best to curve it like this. All right, that's going in. All right, and you know, it, it has a little bit of tension on there, but it still works. Now you could put this on the bottom or on the top. I don't know which way is better for me yet. I'm thinking I like the bottom more. That's the bottom look. I might do it at the bottom. So let's unscrew this one. I have them both facing downward. I can adjust this and slide this left and right. All right, so we have our two patch antennas in the front. It looks amazing. Let's put the top ones now. Wow, very, very small. Okay, I thought I ordered two of them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> We got a problem here. I thought I ordered two. I thought there was two in the box. That looks amazing. <laughs> now I gotta buy another one. Is it in the bag? I gotta check my invoice. Okay, so I have some Luminaire antennas here. So the same branding, Luminaire. These are also SMA. The only difference is that these are not stubbies. These are actual um, longer antennas for either your VTX or for your traditional goggles. I like to use longer ones. So you can just screw this on here. It won't look as neat and as clean, but there you go. Here's your setup. This is all good to go now, guys. This is all set up. I have an SD card in here. All I gotta do now is remove these lens protector. Let's peel these off. This is the moment of truth. We're just gonna pull that off. We have a clean lens. This is the cleanest it's ever gonna be. And I have my power cable here. This one here is included with this goggles and I've seen a lot of guys in the forums or on the discord server a lot of guys are talking about alternate ways to power this what kind of batteries to use guys are getting away with some of the radio master batteries and those can fit in here pretty well make sure my switch is in the off position which is at and then I'll plug this in and then we should be good to go that's that antenna we don't need this this is the actual analog module and we'll talk about this in the next video because we're going to do a separate video just for the analog receiver on here all right the moment of truth is here um let's put these on and see what happens i'm gonna take my glasses off so that i can see what's on the screen here and let's go am i doing this right did i forget anything now nah, let's do it wow hd zero That looks good. That's clear as heck. Oh man. It's not bad. I'm seeing double image, almost like my IPD is off or something. I'm seeing dual images. Yeah, I think, damn it. It's clear. I just, I'm seeing double images. Uh, I 
don't know if I'll get used to that. Let's see if I can power it through this. Let's see here. Anyways, you can see the menu here. Scan now is scanning. And you can rotate the source, image settings, power, the fans. It's an auto control. It's saying no SD card on mine. I'm gonna power up my drone here and see if I can see an image. There should be an image on there. And let's hit the scan now. Scanning. And it detected the signal. Wow, this thing is clear. Really nice image. You can see my setup, you can see my microphone. Really, really nice. It's just, I'm seeing blurred image. There are two images and we don't want that. We don't want two images. Well, let's go to the computer. We're gonna take a look at this firmware on here. Try to put the latest one on here. And then, yeah, see if I can look into this whole double vision thing and see what's going on with that. Okay, so we're here at the computer. We have our goggles here. We have our power cable and our two drones that we do want to update as well. So before I begin this process here, I wanna say two things. First thing, as you saw at the table there, I had some issues with this goggles here with the optics on here. I was seeing two images instead of one combined image. Now this took a while, but I finally got it to work. Now this wasn't a hardware issue. This was more of a human factor issue. Um, and there's no way to correct this. Long story short, my body and brain just had to adapt to the optics of these goggles. Now I've done a lot of research seeing why this wasn't working for me, whether it was my prescription. My prescription isn't that bad. Um, and there's only two cases that I saw that someone had similar issues where no matter how much they adjust the IPDs or the focusing rings, they just couldn't see a one or a combined image. But we'll talk about how I accidentally got this to work in our, I guess, full review of these goggles. Now, the second thing here is, as you saw, I was doing the setup of this. I had only one of these Luminaire stubby antennas. These are the new ones by Luminaire. I did get a second one, so now we have two stubby antennas, and this looks really, really nice and modern and sleek and clean. Now, having said that, we're here at the computer. Let's begin the update and the firmware update on the goggles, as well as these drones. This goggle can do both. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is go to the HD0 website. I have it pulled up right here. Here's the HD0 website, and go to support and downloads. This is where you can download all the manuals and firmwares for your goggles, as well as your VTX. Now, DiviMath and HD0 does these updates a little bit differently. What they do, they send one big, large update every so often, and it's just one update based on the revision date or the date of publish. As you can see right here, revision day, month and year. So this is the latest one right here. As you can see here in the release notes, you can see some of the updates here. So VTX update and added HDMI 1080p 60. And the big one here is the 72100 support, which is good for the other VRX on the market. So it's a pretty simple process. All you do is download the zip file here or whichever one you want based upon the revision date on here. Now I've already done that on here. That's a zip file, you open it up, and then you have all the files in that folder. In this case, we are gonna download the one for the goggles that you saw right here, HD0 goggles. You also have some for the Whoop VTX, which is this right here, as well as the Whooplate VTX here for my Tiny Hawk 3 HD0. So we're just gonna unzip this one here for our goggles, but you also have a goggles right here, emergency recovery in case this thing does fail and you do kind of brick the operating system, then you have that here as well. And all these instructions are on the HD0 website, how to update the firmware. So let's just open this up, unzip it, and here's your file right here. So I'm just gonna copy this, and we're gonna put that file to the SD card or the root portion of your SD card. All right, so here it is. We can just maximize this. And now this goggle file is in the root directory of this. Let's take this SD card out back in here. Now the update process on this goggle is a little bit different than the previous generations of goggles or VRX. In those versions, you would just put the SD card in here and once you power it up, it would read the SD card and update automatically. In this case, it's a little bit different. You have to go into the menu and then do the update manually, which is a good and a bad thing. I will talk about that a little bit later. So let's just put this on and update this whole thing. So here we go, I can see HD zero on there. So we're gonna do this here together. Let's minimize this and we can see it right here. Okay, so we hit the main menu, which is typical in your goggles here. We're just gonna scroll down to the about section or menu, select it. Oops, 
go down here, select it, and here it shows you the current version, and then you can update the goggle. So we're just gonna press this, select it, and it should update the goggle. Wait, do not power off, and it should do its thing right there. So make sure you have a full battery when you're doing this. That's triple six one twenty. So we'll see what the new version is gonna be. Now this is gonna give you a whole bunch of features. We talked about the features before, the 100 frames per second at 720, as well as 1080p at 60. So there's a lot of features on here. Also like stuff for like OSD, MSP support, all that stuff is updated on here. So there's also a lot of bug fixes. These guys are working around the clock. We have beta testers and they're making sure that everything here is complete and working flawlessly. So I would highly recommend that you uh, update the firmware on these goggles if you have the time or opportunity to do it. All right, so I heard three beeps or three chirps, and it says update success, repower goggle now. So we're just gonna cycle the power, put it off, then put it back on and see what happens here. All right, HD zero screen with the dots in here. I don't hear the fan. The fan should kick in pretty soon. Here's the fan. And there it is. Let's see what the firmware number shows now. So there it is, it changed. Here's the current firmware update or current version, 7.68.127. So that's different on there. So while we're here, we're just gonna take a look at the menu since we didn't get to look at that on the setup because I had that issue with the dual image or blurred image. And this is the main page right here. This is your scan page for your HD0. This is where you're gonna see all your reception for all your channels. And then you can do a scan. You can hit scan now. It will do an auto scan and detect the drone or the VTX in your drone. Next one here is the source. And that's where you can change all your sources here. You have HD0, HDMI in, AV in expansion module. So it defaults to HD0, but you can actually change that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. There you go, R1. Then you have HDMI in, that's disconnected. So you can use that for say your Walksnail VRX. And then you have AV in, that's the 3.5 millimeter. And then you have the expansion module and it says disconnected. I don't have any expansion module on this one. Now I've done a full review on how to set that up. I'll leave that video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. But if it was connected, then you would see it available and then you can select that and then you can see your analog module on here. It says that you have your image settings. You can change the OLED brightness, saturation, contrast. Um, and the OLED auto off. So in case this thing doesn't detect any kind of movement, there's accelerometers in here. If it doesn't detect any kind of movement, then the screens will go off after five minutes, which is a pretty cool thing. And it kind of preserves your battery as well as the OLED screens. Below that you have the power and power management. It detects the battery. It says 4S on here. So obviously this is good for 2 to 6S battery. And then you have a voltage warning on there and you have both a visual and or a beep. I have it on both right now. The beep isn't that loud if I heard it recently, but that is available. Now you can hear the next thing on here is the fan. Um, you have it on, off or auto. The top fan is set to two, side fans are set to one. And usually you want that to auto. That is recommended that you keep it to auto. So it's gonna change based upon the temperature. Now the next menu here is the record option, which is probably the most important one for us. And as I can see right here, because I just did this update, some of my options has changed. So for me, record mode, I want it to be on manual. So we're kind of familiar with MP4 format and most computers know how to use that. Now this thing here does record in the H.265 format as well. So uh, just remember that. But the MP4, the downside to that is in case you have power loss or someone yanks out the barrel plug for your goggles, it will stop recording and you might have some corrupt files. So you might not have your recording in your DVR. With the TS, it does preserve it, it is saving it. So that's up to you whether or not you wanna use TS or MP4. Uh, record OSD, that's available. Record audio, yes, obviously. And then your audio source. Now this goggles has uh, two inputs for audio, actually three. You have the mic that's built into it. You also have a line in that you can use a 3.5 millimeter jack and also the AV in, which is from this uh, side port right here. Now below you have the format SD card, which is really important and applicable to this video because at the desk there, I did put an SD card in this goggle and it did not recognize it. So I forgot to mention that when I said the two things I had to mention uh, was the, uh, the antenna and the optics. I also forgot to mention that the way to make this card work is to either format it on the computer using the FAT32 or put it into the goggles and then just format it that way. And as you can see on the screen, it shows 116.69 gigabytes available, so it does work.
So this is pretty cool. Uh, we talked about the, the different modes on here. You can do auto scan and power up as well as the default. Do you want it to go to HD zero? You want it to go to the line in or the AVN or the HDMI in? It will default to that. In my case, I, this is predominantly a HD zero goggle. So I do have it on HD zero or in this case it says last, which is pretty cool. So that's, that's pretty good. I, I like that actually. Um, that's a pretty cool option. And I only said because if I'm flying outside in the field, flying with my analog module, and I wanna take a break or switch batteries in my drone, I might power down this goggles. When I do power back on, I want it to go back to the analog bay as well. So the last uh, mode that I have it in is where it's gonna go to, which is pretty cool. Connections, you have all your ESP stuff, firmware, Wi-Fi stuff, and some of the stuff here was on earlier. Um, it's now off, so backpack is off, Wi-Fi settings. So if you wanna set this up for your controller so you can have your controller actually uh, change your channel to both the VTX in your drone as well as the channel in your goggles, you can do it right here. As far as your head, head tracker, you can also configure this for your head tracker. I don't use that, but you can do all this stuff. So if you have a camera tilting, panning up and down, then you can have that enabled. Then you have your DV, your playback right here. And let's see if it shows it. Yeah, here's all your your videos on here and I'm sure it works pretty well. Let's see how that works. And there it is. I wonder if you can fast forward it. Yeah, yeah, it fast forwards. There it goes. All right, and then the firmware, we just talked about how to update the firmware on that and you go to the firmware menu and you can update the actual VTX or update the goggles. You also have your current version on there. So we talked about that. Now, that's it for menus. This thing is pretty extensive. You can customize this as much as you want. Now we're gonna update the actual VTX and then we'll come back to this port right here or this menu to update our VTX. So let's power this down. Okay, so we have our SD card out of our goggle. I'm gonna put it back into the computer here and I'm gonna delete that goggles file on here. All right, so I'm just gonna delete that. We don't need it any longer. Boom. Now I'm gonna go back here to my actual firmware that we just downloaded here, the same most recent one with the same date. And I'm gonna pick the actual firmware for my applicable VTX. As you can see right here, whoop VTX, that's the one I want. All right, here it is right here, XD0TX. Now I'm just gonna paste this to the root directory and see if it works. So that's now on the root directory and that's it. It's a very similar process. I'll take this out. I'm gonna put it back into the micro SD card slot here. Okay, so now that we have our SD card in here, we need to plug our update cable to the goggles. Now, each drone or each VTX has a update port on there. Now, this one here is included with the goggles, and it's gonna be slightly different for my Tiny Hawk 3, which has a smaller VTX. So make sure these things are correct. I don't wanna force it in the wrong way, all right? Now, typically you would have to power this drone up, but I think with these goggles, you don't have to power up your drone or VTX. Now, this has an update port under here, pretty easy accessible, and I'm just gonna plug that into the port. All right, so let, oh, it's gonna be tough to do this one. All right, so let's power that on. Okay, so now that we have that on here, is working, it's on. Let's scroll down to the menu just like before. Scroll down to firmware. All right, and then update VTX. Make sure it's all plugged in still. Let's update it. Flashing, wow, that was fast. Success, that's done. Our VTX on our large hair, this drone here, the Apex is updated. All right, and then I'm going to put the other file on here. And then we're just gonna do the whoop light VTX because my Tiny Hawk 3 has that smaller VTX. And here it is. It looks like the same name, but it's not. We're gonna copy it and put that to the root directory of this one. Let's delete this one first. <laughs> delete and then paste this one on there. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our SD card back in our goggles with the right firmware for the whoop light VTX. We're just gonna scroll down to firmware and do the same thing as before, and then just update VTX. Click on that. It's flashing it. Success. Really, really, really quickly and really, really fast. I did not reseal this, but I'm just gonna plug a battery in here and see how it looks on the screen, if there's anything that's different. There it is. All right, so there you go. Pretty awesome.
Now they did update, I can see the actual font on here. It looks amazing. So the update did a really good job and you can see the font looks good. You have more of a modern font on here. Looks really, really nice guys. So now our device is updated, both our goggles and our drone guys. So that's it for setup. We're gonna take this for a flight and then yeah, I'll give you my impressions on these goggles in our next video. This will be a full review on these goggles and I'll let you know. So if you wanna see that video, hit that subscribe button. Therefore you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.